topic for today is all about Singaporean literature. But first, let's talk about the country of Singapore through brief information. Are you ready? Let's go! Welcome to Singapore! Singapore is a sovereign island city-state in marine time of Southeast Asia. And now, let's talk about first the Singapore history. The history of the modern Singapore dates back to its corresponding in the early 19th century, but evidence suggests that a significant trading settlement existed on the island of Singapore in the 14th century. At that time, the Kingdom of Singapore was under the rule of Parameswara, who killed the previous ruler before he was expelled in the Mahapahit or the Siamis. It then came under the Malacca Sultanate and then the Johor Sultanate. In 1819, Sir Thomas Stamford Raffles negotiated a treaty whereby Johor allowed the British to locate a trading port on the island, leading to the establishment of the British Crown Colony of Singapore in 1819. Sa panahon ng World War II, ang Singapore ay sinakop at nasakop ng Japanese mula 1942 hanggang 1945. Nang matapos ang gyera, bumalik ang Singapore sa kontrol ng British na may pagtaas ng antas ng self-government na binigyan ng nagtapos sa pagsanib ng Singapore sa Federation of Malaya to form Malaysia noong 1963. Ang Singapore mula sa Malaysia ay isang malayang republika noong Agosto 1965. Pagsapit ng dekada 1990, ang bansa ay naging isa sa pinakamaunlad na mga bansa sa buong mundo na may isang mataas na binubuo ng ekonomiya ng malayang pamilihan. Malakas ng mga ugnayan sa international na pangangalakal. Mayroon na ngayong pinakamataas na per capita gross domestic product sa Asia na pang pito sa buong mundo at nasa ikanwebe na pwesto sa UN Human Development Index. The Singapore Culture and Tradition Culture in Singapore is defined by the different ethnic groups in the city-state, Chinese, Malay, and Indian, and Western influences are palpable there, making for a mix of traditions and local customs, Singapore a fine city. In addition, culture in Singapore is largely defined by peace, justice, culture, and social religious harmony. That saying that Singapore is a fine city not only refers to cleanliness or its quality of life. In fact, to ensure a safety and order in the state, the government has prohibited various things. If you don't want to pay a heavy fine, or even spend time in jail, you should avoid the following. Chewing gum, spitting, littering, dancing on counters, tables at bar. It is important that you abide by certain rules before you enter in a place of worship. Take off your shoes before you enter a mosque or a temple. Wash your feet and hands before you entering a Hindu temple. Dress appropriately. Women are expected to cover their hair or parts of their body before entering a mosque or a temple. Make sure that picture is allowed before getting out your camera. A religious building is no place for a picnic. Don't eat there. Bring along food of flowers to Hindu and Buddhist temple as an offering of for the gods. Singapore food. Singaporean food can be divided into five types. Meat, seafood, rice, noodles, 
and desert or snacks. Singapore is especially renowned for its seafood. Chill crab and black pepper crab are two quintessential dishes that dominate the scene and are greatly recommended to tourists. Another favorite is Sambal Stingray. Sambal Stingray is most popular at Singapore. Singapore Traditional Costume for women, Bujukurung is the traditional outfit of the Malay women and also the national dress of Singapore. It comprises of a blouse for the upper part and a long skirt or sarong for the lower part. The dress is especially worn by the Malay women during Fridays for work as a mark of respect to the tradition and culture. Men wear a salwar kurta and a dhoti a long piece of embroidered cloth worn around the waist, or akan, which is a combo of trousers and a jacket, usually embroidered and colorless. Mostly, other than these traditional dresses of Singapore, the fashion of Singapore is imbibed from the Western dressing sense. Singapore's plan are consist two horizontal lines, one above that is red and below which is white. The upper red part has a crescent white moon surrounded by five star arranged in a pentagon. Singapore's flag represents its statehood and thus it, it was imperative for the cabinet to make something that helps express and embody the beliefs and aspiration of the people of Singapore. This include their religion, passion of democracy, peace and justice. Helix Bridge This famous pedestrian bridge in Singapore is perfect for soaking in area views of the Marina Bay. The Helix Bridge is an architectural marble and links that marina south to the marina center and makes navigating easy for people. Marina Barrage The Marina Barrage in Singapore is much more than just a dam because it is also acts as a place for recreation and it is a popular tourist attraction. Kavina Bridge This popular landmark in Singapore holds the distinction of being one of the oldest bridges in the city. Esplanade The Esplanade is in Singapore's downtown core and it lies north of Singapore River's mouth. A stroll along the waterfront at night is magical as you can see. The city skyline all lit up. The lights reflect on the water, transporting you to a different world. Singapore is a multi-religious country. The most followed religion in the country is Buddhism followed by Islam, Christianity, Taoism, Hinduism, and others. There are 42.5% of Singaporean who are considered to be Buddhist. 14.9% are Islam. 14.8% of Singaporeans do not have religious affiliation. 14.6% are Christians. 8.5% Taoism. 4% are considered Hindu. And the remainders are belonging to the other religious group. There are many languages in Singapore. The four official languages in Singapore are Mandarin, Malay, Tamil, and English. In Singapore, English is a common language. Children are taught in English at school, but also learn their mother tongue to make sure they don't lose contact with their traditions. Now, let's talk about Singaporean literature. 
The Literature of Singapore comprises a collection of literary works by Singaporeans in any of the country's four main languages, English, Chinese, Malay, and Tamil. While the Singaporean literary is works that considered belonging to the literature of their specific languages. The literature portraying various aspects of Singapore society forms a significant part of a culture of Singapore. Singapore has four sub-literature instead of one. Singapore Literature in English started with the straight-born Chinese community in the colonial era. It is not clear which was the first work of literature in English published in Singapore, but this is evidence literature published as early as the 1830s, with the evidence of Singapore in 1965. New Age of Singapore writing emerged led by the Edwin Tambu, Arthur Yap, Robert Chu, Gop Po Seng, Lee Tzu Peng, and Chadranya. It is telling the many critical essays on Singapore literature, named Tambu's Generation, rightly or wrongly, as the first generation of Singapore writers. Poetry is the predominant mode of expression and most published works of Singapore writing in English have been in poetry. Poetry in English in Singapore found a new momentum with the whole new generation of poets born around after 1965, now actively writing and published not only in Singapore but also internationally. Since the late 1990s, local small presses such as First Fruit and Ethos Book has been actively promoting the works of this new wave of poets. Some of the more notable includes Boy Kim Cheng, Yung Shu Hong, Alvin Pang, Cyril Wong, Felix Xiong, and Alfin Bin Saad, also a playwright. The poetry of this younger generation is often politically aware, transnational and cosmopolitan, yet frequently present their intensely focused self-questioning and highly individualized perspective Singaporean life, society, and culture. Drama in English found expression in Go Po Sing, who was a notable poet and novelist in Robert Yu, author of Six Plays, and Ku Pao Kun, who also wrote in Chinese, sometimes translating his works into English. The late Ku was a virtual force in the local theater renaissance in the 1980s and 1990s. He was the artistic director of the substation for many years. Some of his plays, like The Coffin is Too Big the Hole, 1984, and Lao Ju, 1990, have been now considered classics. Stella Kohn gained international fame with her now famous play, Emily of Emerald Hill, a monologue about an aging Perenakan Metriage. It has been produced in Scotland, Malaysia, and Australia. The sole character has been played by men as well as a woman. Singaporean fiction is writing in English. Short stories flourish as a literary form, and after that, the novel arrived. Gopo Seng remains a pioneer in writing novels well before many of the later generation. If We Dream Too Long, 1972, by Gopo Seng, this novel is widely recognized as the first true Singaporean novel. And A Dance of Moths, 1995, also by Gopo Seng. Beginning as a short story writer, Penang born Catherine Lim has been Singapore's most widely read author. 
Her first two books, Short Stories, Little Ironies, Stories of Singapore, 1978, and Or Else, The Lightning God and Other Stories, 1980, lean themes of Asian male chauvinistic gender dominance, mark her as a distant cousin to Asian American writer such as Amitan. She has also been writing novels such as The Bond Maid, 1998, and The Following the Wrong God Home, 2001, and publishing them to an international audience since the late 1990s. May Han is the pseudonym of Joan Han, who is better known for her non-fiction books. Her science fiction romance, Star Sapphire, 1985, won a high commendation award from the Book Development Council of Singapore in 1986. The same year, when she was also awarded, a commendation prize for her better known book relatively speaking on her family and childhood memories. Rex Hales, from an early colonial generation, although he began publishing only in the early 1990s. His first novel, The Shrink People, 1991, the book won a national book prize. His three other novels, People of the Pearl Tree, 1993, Island in the Center, 1995, and River of Roses, 1998, all examine similar themes of Russian community in the Southeast Asia region. He has won the SEA Wright Award in 2007. Harry Sherman is a playwright who has written more than 50 plays that have been staged all over the world, including Singapore, Melbourne, Glasgow, Birmingham, and London. In May 2010, his highly acclaimed play, Those Who Can, Teach was published in book form by the independent publisher, Epigram Books. The first one is Aaron Lee. is a Singapore prize-winning poet who writes English. He was born in Malaysia but received his education in Singapore and became a Singaporean in 1996. The second one is Grace Chia, journalist and editor from Singapore. She is the author of several poetry, a novel, and a collection of short stories. The third one is Don Bosco, is a writer and publisher of fiction books from Singapore. In 2011, he founded Super Cool Books a publishing company with interest fantasy and mystery stories for children and young adults. The fourth one is Alpian Bitsat, is a Singaporean writer, poet, and playwright. He is known for his provocative works and is often referred to as his country and fun terrible. The fifth one is Gopal Bharatma, was a Singaporean author. He was known for his prank style and his ability to write about politics that were often considered controversial in the conservative city-state. The last one is Go Po Seng. was born in Kuala Lumpur, British Malaya in 1936. He was educated at Victoria Institution in Kuala Lumpur, received his medical degree from University College, practiced medicine in Singapore, for 25 years. Philip Anthony Jayaretna is the Singapore Chief Executive Officer and Global Vice Chair at Dentons. He is a Senior Counsel and a former President of the Law Society of Singapore. He is also a Singaporean lawyer and novelist. Next, Ko Buk Song is a Singaporean writer he is the author and editor of more than 30 books and works as a writer, editor and consultant in branding, communication strategy and corporate social responsibility in Singapore. Russell Lee is a Singaporean author best known as the creator of True Singapore Ghost Stories, a series of books that has been one of the most popular sources of ghost stories in Singapore. Anne Lee Chu Peng is a Singaporean poet. She has five volumes of poems to her name. Of these, the first three 
prospect of a droning against the next wave and the brink of an amen were winners of the National Book Development Council of Singapore Award. Dr. Lyang Wernfuck is a Cantonese Singaporean writer, musician, singer, and researcher in Chinese literature and pedagogy. He was one of the pioneer figures in Sinio movement in the 1980s and 1990s. Catherine Lim Po In is a Singaporean fiction author known for writing about Singapore society and of themes of traditional Chinese culture. Tan Tan Ho is a Singaporean playwright. His plays have been staged in Singapore and Hong Kong and have won numerous awards. In 2011, Epigram Books published a collection of six of his plays. Edwin Tambu is a Singaporean poet and academic who is regarded as one of the pioneers of English literature in Singapore. Thambu rose to the position of full professor in the Department of English Language and Literature, heading the department between 1977 and 1993. Cyril Wong is a Singaporean-born poet whose work deals with the themes of identity, existence, and human relationship, is an awarding winning poet and writer. Eleanor Wong is a Singaporean playwright, poet, lawyer, and legal academic. Arthur Yap is one of Singapore's most important poets. He was also a painter and a writer of short stories. King Tan is a technology entrepreneur and Singaporean poet. His work has been performed in Australia and United Kingdom, where he did his postgraduate study at Cambridge. The Taximan's History by Catherine Lee. Please make it fast, because I have a meeting to attend and I need to be there in on time. Oh, very good, madam. Sure. I will take you there in plenty good time for your meeting, madam. This way better. Less traffic, less car jumps, half hour should make it, madam, so not to worry. Have you been a taximan for a long time? What is it you say, madam? Yes, yes, yes. Ha ha ha. Been taximan for 20 years now, madam. Long time ago, Singapore not like this. So crowded, so busy. Last time, more peaceful. Not so much taxi men, oh so much cars and buses. Oh, you must seem working so hard. Yes, madam. Can make a living. So, what to do? Must work hard if you want to success in Singapore. People like us, no education, no capital for business. We must sweat to earn money for wife and children. Do you have a big family? Yes, madam. Quite big family. Eight children, six sons, two daughter, big family? <laughs> no good, madam. In those days, when got family planning in Singapore, people born many, many children every year, one child, is no good at all. Today is much better. Two children, three children, enough. Stop. Our government say stop. Lucky for me, all my children big now. Four of my sons working. One is a businessman, two clerks, one is a teacher in primary school, one in a national service, one still schooling in secondary. My eldest daughter, she is 20 plus, stay at home, help the mother. Is your daughter already married? No, not married yet. Very shy and her health not so good. But a good and obedient girl, my other girl, oh, madam. Be very hard for the father when daughter is no good and go against her parents. Very sad like punishment from God. Today, young people not like us when we are young. We obey. Our parents say, don't do this. We never do. Otherwise, the cane. My father cane me. I was big enough to be married and still got caning. My father, he was very strict and that is good thing for parents to be strict. If not, young boys and girls become very useless, do not want to study, but run away and go to nightclubs and take drugs and make love. You agree with me, madam? Yes. 
today, young people, they are very troubled to their parents. Madam, you see these young people over there, outside the coffee house? See what I mean, madam? Yes. They are only schoolboys and schoolgirls, but they act like big shots, spending money, smoking, wearing latest fashion, and making love. Ah, madam. Oh, yes. Even you are a taxi man. You are aware of the behavior of teenagers nowadays. I know, I know. As a taxi man, I know them and their habits. Madam, you are a teacher, you say? Yes. You know or not that young schoolgirls, 15, 16 years old, they go to public laboratory or hotel and change into these occults and they put makeup on their face, their parents never know. They tell their mom, got school meeting, got sports and games, this, that, but they really come out and play the fool. Ah, madam, I see you surprised, but I know, I know all their tricks. I take them about in my taxi. They usual is wait in bowling alley or coffee house or hotel, and they walk up and friend the European and American tourists and this is how they make fun and also extra money. Madam, you believe or not, when I tell you how much money they got, I say, Last night, Madam, fourth floor flat, and she opened her purse to pay me. And I say, all American notes, $10 notes all. And she pull one out and say, keep change as she has no time already. Madam, I tell you this. Every month I get more money from these young girls and their American and European boyfriends in my taxi. More than I get from other people who bargain and say, don't want go by meter and wait even for 10 cents change. Pooh, some of them really make mad. But these young girls and their boyfriends don't bargain. They just pay, pay, and they make love in taxi so much they don't know if you go around and round and change them by meter. I tell you, madam, some of them don't care how much they spend on taxis. It is like this. After the 1 a.m., taxi fare double, and I prefer working this time. Because naturally, much more money. I go and wait outside Elroy Hotel, or Tong Court, or Orchid Mansions. And sure enough, madam, we'll have a plenty business. Last Saturday, madam, no joking, on one day alone, I make nearly $150, some of it for service, some of tourists don't know where, so I tell them and take them there, and that's extra money. You surely know a lot of things. Ah, uh, madam, if I tell you, no end to the story. I will tell you this, madam, if you have a young daughter and she says, Mommy, I got meeting today in school, and I will not come home. You must not say, yes, yes, but you must go and ask her where and why and who. And you find out, today, young people not to trust, like young people in many years ago. Why are you telling this? Oh, madam, I tell you because I myself have a daughter. Madam, a daughter I love very much, and she is so good and study hard. And I see her report cards and her teacher write, good work and excellent, so on, so on. Oh, madam, she my favorite child, and I ask her what she want to be after left school. And she says, go to university. None of my other children could go to university, but this one, she is very smart and intelligent. No boosting. Madam, her teacher write good and excellent and so on so on in her report cards. She study at home and help the mother, but sometimes a little lazy. And she say teacher want her to go back to school to do extra work, extra coaching in her weak subject, which is math, madam. So I let her stay back in school, and day after day, she come home in evening. Then she do her studies and go to sleep. Then one day, oh madam, it makes me so angry even now. One day, I in my taxi driving, driving along, and they, hey, I see a girl looking like my lechu, with other girls and European outside a coffee house. But I think, it cannot be lechu. How can? Lechu is in school, and this girl is all dressed up and makeup, and very bold her behavior. And this is not like my daughter at all. 
Then they all go inside the coffee house, and my heart is very, very whole. You describe it, madam. My heart is very susati hati, and I say to myself, I will watch that lechu and see her monkey tricks. The very next day, she is there again, and I stop my taxi, madam, and I am so angry. I rush up to this weak daughter and I catch her by the shoulders and neck and stop her and she scream. But I don't care. Then I drag her to my taxi and drive all the way home. And at home, I trash her stupid fool and I beat her and slap her till like hell. My wife and some neighbors, they pull me away. And I think if they not pull me away, I sure to kill that girl. I lock her up in her room for three days. And I ashamed to tell her teacher, so I just tell the teacher that Leicho is sick. So please to excuse her. Oh, madam, how you feel in my place? Make herself so cheap when her father drive taxi all day to save money for her university. Is everything between you and your daughter is okay now? What is it, madam? Yes, yes, everything okay now. Thank you. She cannot leave the house except to go to school and I tell her mother always check, check in everything she do and her friends, what sort of people they are. Ah, madam, young people today, what trouble they are. Oh, I see. Can you wait for me until my meeting is done? What, madam? Oh, sorry, madam. Cannot wait for you to finish your meeting. Must go off. Please to excuse me. In a hurry, madam. Must go off to Hotel Earl Roy. There plenty young people pick up. So very sorry, madam. And thank you very much. Oh, that's okay. Thank you for sharing the story for me. That's the Singaporean story. That story is a dialogue between the taxi man and his passenger, which he calls madam. However, throughout the story, only his responses and narration can be read giving advices to his passenger to be aware her own daughter. This story also reflects the harsh truth about teenager at present. Also, the parents need to instill strong guiding principle on their children. Activity time! Make your own comic strip about what you have learned in Singaporean literature and use your own words. First, go to the Play Store or App Store. Second, search the Kaiton Comic Strip Maker. Third, find the icon like this and install it. Then open it and tap on plus sign to create your story. Go to create custom. You can only use four or six boxes. After all, you can now start making your own comic strip. Good luck! Hey, it's me, Jasmine. Why, yes, girl? I fly the train as sail. I'm Jian Kathleen as Muto. I'm Genesis J. Tabayoyo. Why, yes, girl? I fly the train as sail. I'm Jian Kathleen as Muto. I'm Genesis J. Tabayoyo.